Welcome and hello. This is a video tutorial in HECRAS. And in this lesson, I'm going to be talking about steady state flow analysis entering the data. All right. So, what I have up on the screen here is my HECRAS. I've got my files up at top and then my geometric data editor down below here. You, so, you can see I've got a simple reach with a lateral structure, inline structure, storage area, and a few cross sections. And what we're going to be doing here is going up to the edit menu and then click on steady flow data. All right, what we have here is a dialog box for steady flow data. And before we can run a steady state simulation, we need to provide data for the simulation to run. So we're going to be exploring this dialog box and all of its options in this lesson. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, up at the top here, we have a description that's optional. But we also have a few uh, menu items like file, options, and help. We will be uh, stepping through all these options and describing them in turn. I'm going to make the window a little bit larger. Next down, we have the number of profiles. Maximum is 32,000, so that's plenty. If we have a one here, we just have one record. If we have two, then it changes. Oh, I guess I have to tab. Okay. PF2 for profile two, uh, three, PF3 for profile three. I've already gone ahead and renamed these, so that's why you see 10 year right here. But if I wanted to change the names to PF1, 2, and 3, or 10 year, 20 year, or 50 year, then I can do that as well. I can go up to the options menu, edit profile names, and then this dialog box here gives me the ability to change the names to whatever text string I want. So I'll say 100 year, and then instead of PF3, I'll say, I'll say 1000 year. OK, so when I click OK, those labels for the profile names get updated in the table. Next, what we need to do is specify the flow rate for the all the profiles that we have and then also for that particular river reach and uh, river station cross section. So right now, what I have up here is uh, the river, the reach. I only have one river. I only have one reach. And then I have three different cross sections. So 2000. Uh, foot cross section is the upstream end. So move that over. Yeah, so here's a 2000 cross section at 1000 and then a cross section at uh, river station zero. So there's 2000 right there. I'm going to go ahead and just type in some numbers here. Okay, so just I just making up some numbers here for flow rates. I can add a flow change as well. If I click on this button, what that does is, oh, I already have one for 2000. So if I select a different river station like 1000, for instance, I can click add a flow change and then I can specify the flow rate at that cross section as well, which is at uh, river station 1000 and then river station uh, zero. I can also delete all this data by going up to options, delete row from table or delete all rows from table. So if I delete all rows from table, there's a delete confirmation and then poof, it's all gone. I still have the same three profiles as before because I didn't delete the profiles, but I can delete the profile by selecting on a profile such as this last one here, 1000 year options, delete columns or profile from the table. And then um, the last profile cannot be deleted. OK, so, OK, I find another way how to remove profiles from the table. Just come up here, change this back to a one hit tab and then say yes to confirm. And now we're back down to our one profile where we started at tenure. Another way to add profiles is to click on this button, add multiple. So if I click add multiple, I can just uh, double click for all river stations and then click on OK. What this did was add uh, multiple river stations for whatever profiles I have. I only have one profile here, but I can go ahead and add three. And then let me go ahead and rename them as before. Edit profile names. 10 year, 100 year and 1000 year. OK, back to where we were. I can re I can also delete individual rows. So if I select this second row here for River Station 1000, I can go up to Options, Delete Row from Table, it's gone. And then let me just delete this bottom row as well. Delete Row from Table, gone. Okay, I'm going to add my numbers back in here, 2340. There's also this Apply Data up here, this button. If I click that, it will basically save the data. So I'll click Apply Data. And then now we're going to look at some of the options. And I showed that apply data button because this first option is to undo edits. Let me go ahead and make a change. So 3620, let's just call it 3621. Okay, instead of apply data, if I wanted to undo 
edits, then it will say, okay. <clears throat> now we're back to 3620 for that 1000 year flow. This undo data doesn't only undo the last action. It will undo all the actions since the apply data was clicked last. All right. So the next option down here is to copy table data to a clipboard with the headers. So what this does is it just made a copy on my clipboard with this table data right down here. So if I bring over Excel and then uh, click on a cell and then paste control V, it gives me this data right here, which is from the table that we're looking at right here. So that's a nice, quick and easy way to export the table data if you need to do that for some reason. OK, the next option down here is to delete row from table. We've done that. Delete all rows from table. Did that. Delete the column. Next is ratio selected flows. So for instance, if you wanted to modify the flows in the table by a specific ratio, then what you want to do is highlight the cells that you want to change. Maybe it's just one cell. Maybe it's all the cells. And then um, say, for instance, we want to increase this flow by 10%. So with all the cells highlighted, I'll click on the options tab, ratio selected flows, and then I'll type in a 1.1, click OK, and then boom, all those numbers increased by 10%. All right, so that's how that works. And I'm going to click apply data sort of as a way of saving. All right, the next option is edit profile names. We've already done that. So down below here, we're going to set changes in the water surface elevation and energy grade line. That's uh, losses, for instance. In this dialog box, what we have here are a few different options. We have two different tabs at the top. So the first tab is to add river station locations one at a time. And then the second tab over here is add multiple river stations locations. Let's do one at a time here to start. This entire dialog box options allows the user to set specific changes in the water surface and energy between two different cross sections in the model. The method of operation to use this dialog box is the following. First of all, select the tab. Then you're going to want to select the river reach profile and river station from these drop downs right here. I'll just go ahead with these ones. After that, you want to select one of these five buttons from additional energy grade loss all the way down to K loss. That will populate part of the row. The next row you want to add to the table. And then finally, you're going to want to enter the value manually. So let's go ahead and get started with the first one to just sort of demonstrate how this works. We'll stick with this tab right here. We'll use River A, Reach 1, the 10-year profile, as well as River Station 2000 cross-section. I'll click Additional EG. Additional EG button here allows the user to add additional energy loss between two cross-sections. So as you see, the table row here has been populated with all of our information above plus the type of additional EG. Now it's up to me, the user, to specify the additional energy grade line loss at that river station 2000. So I'll say 0 0.5. I can go ahead and make additional edits. Say, for instance, I want to make the same additional energy grade line loss at the next river station down at 1,000 feet. I'll click additional EG, 0 0.5. And then one final one. Oops, already have that one. And then let me select the river station 0 and then go 0 0.5. I can also delete data. So if I wanted to clear an individual row, I could just select that row, click the delete button. Or if I want to delete all the data, there's a button down here in the bottom right, clear all, and then there's a delete confirmation, and then you're cleared. I can make the same edits a little bit faster by using this tab for add multiple river station locations. Again, this will be 10 year, click additional EG, and then I can select all the river stations and then OK. Now I can just go 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and 0 0.5, and then OK. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and clear that. So clear all. OK. Say, for instance, we wanted to add additional energy grade loss at, that depends on the flow rate with a 10 year, for instance. So let's go back to 2000, 10 year. I'll say this is 0 0.5. And then if I want to change it to 100 year, I'll click additional EG again, 0 0.8. And then for 1,000 year, which is even higher flows, that could be 1.1 feet. OK, so there's different ways to do that. That was just additional EG. We've got four other buttons to explore here. For instance, change in EG right here. The label says add a line to the table at the currently selected location to set the 
change in energy. When this option is selected, the program does not perform an energy balance. It just uses the specified change in EG value to compute the water surface elevation. Next up is known WS for known water surface elevation. This option, this button here, allows the user to set the water surface at a specified cross section for a specific profile. Uh, the next one is change in water surface elevation. This allows the user to force a specific change in the water surface elevation between two cross sections. And then the last one, K loss here. This allows the user to calculate an additional energy loss that will be added into the solution of the energy balance. The user enters the K value, which is a range between 0 and 1.0, and is very analogous to the minor loss coefficient found in pipe flow hydraulics, because, it, because that value is multiplied by the velocity head of the current cross section. So that is how to use this interface for setting internal changes to the water surface or energy grade line. The next option in the steady flow data editor is observed water surface. So if we happen to have observed water surface data, we can use this interface. Once the user has this dialog box opened up, I had to delete that one row I already had. Um, go ahead and confirm that you have the river reach and river station that you're interested in. Then click on this button that says add an observed water station location, water surface elevation location. Boom. It'll populate the first three columns of this row. And then it's up to you to specify the actual values. So I'll say 45 feet and then 47 feet and then 49 feet, just making up some numbers. Also, if this observation is not located at the cross section 2000, for instance, maybe it's 100 feet downstream, then you can type in that distance downstream of the specified cross section. OK, so that's how that works. I'll click OK. The next option down is observed rating curve gauges. This is similar to observed water surface. What we're going to do is start by clicking on the add. It's then we're going to specify the name. We can change this name observed RC number one. We could say this is gauge one, gauge location one, rating curve one. Then make sure to specify the river, the reach, and then the river station. So for instance, 2000 again. And if this is a specific distance downstream from that river station cross section at 2000, you can type that number in right there. Next, what we need to do is specify the rating curve. If you happen to have an observed rating curve data. So I just made up some data and put it in the table right there. When the user enters the observed rating curve, it will show up on the rating curve output plot along with the computed water surface versus flow information. Okay, so I'll click that. And then uh, down in options, we have a few more to go. Next is gate openings. So before I click on gate openings, let me just uh, show the inline structure that we have in our river system. This is the inline structure. We have three lower gates and then three upper gates, which we can see the data for entered right here. Okay, I'll spare you those details, but I'm just letting you know we have three sets of gates or two sets of uh, three gates each. So back to our steady flow data editor options, gate openings. So what we have here is the inline gate structure selected at the top. And then we have two different gate groups. There's that lower gate group, which has three openings, 10 feet tall. The upper gate group, what I'm calling it, also three openings, 10 feet tall. So I'm not going to fill out all this data, but for instance, in the 10 year profile, we may say two of the three gates are open and they are open five feet each. And we could say the same thing for the upper gates. We could say two of the three upper gates are open, but maybe they're open eight feet each. So we could continue this sort of data input for the 100 year profile and the 1000 year profile as well. That information is needed for the hydraulics to properly compute. Next up in the options, we have optimize gate openings right here. This is a similar idea to uh, the previous option of gate openings, but in optimize gate openings, this option allows the user to have the program compute a gate setting at a structure in order to obtain a user specified water surface upstream of the structure. So we need to set, specify the river and then the reach and then the target cross section, I'll say 2000. And then water surface profile one, two, and three. I believe this refers to the same uh, profiles we have here for 10 year, 100 year, and 1000 year. Not sure why the names aren't updated, but uh, 
probably makes sense that it's referring to those three. So I will go ahead and type in the water surface elevation and let the optimization set the gate settings. Okay. Options. Next down, we have initial split flow optimization. This is for lateral structures and pumps. And as you notice, I do have a lateral structure right here. It is uh, 220 feet long. It's just downstream of this 1,000 foot cross section. And it's got a, uh, a spillway right here that goes down to 75 feet foot invert. Okay, so just showing you that. Options, initial split flow optimization. This option allows the user to enter initial estimates of the flow that is leaving the main river through the lateral structure or through the pump. So this applies to pumps as well, but we have the, our lateral structure that's set. Right now, it's just set at zero for initial value, but if water happened to be living leaving the river reach at the beginning of the simulation, then these values would be non-zero. Okay, the next option down here is, uh, it's grayed out for me. It's initial and lateral structure outlet time series flow. So uh, this would be op option would be enabled for me if I was using time series. So for instance, lateral structure and then outlet time series. I don't have anything set for either lateral structure or for uh, the inline structure when I click outlet time series. But anyway, if you were using um, outlet, outlet time series data, then this option would be enabled. Okay, last one is storage area elevation. Let me close this and then move this over. I do have a storage area right here. It's not connected at the moment, but uh, I drew it in here just to demonstrate this last option. Storage area elevations. As you see, I have a test storage area, never mind that, but storage area one is this one right here. This allows the user the ability to enter the water surface elevation for storage areas that have been entered into the geometric data. So this is a required field for all three profiles for all the storage areas. And then click OK. Of course, not all of the options that are in this uh, drop down in this options menu are required to run a steady state flow analysis in HECRAS, but uh, sometimes you will need to uh, use some of these options. But this data in the main field is required to set the initial flows in the system. So that was it for entering data to um, in preparation for running a steady flow analysis in HECRAS.